Welcome to my video lecture based on utilization of electric power. Paper code PT702. Last class we have started with new module that is based on electric heating. Today we will continue with the second lecture of electric heating based on electric arc furnace. And in the matrix we have highlighted here that is one is induction type and one is dielectric type. Myself, Mono Banerjee, Assistant Professor of Electrical Engineering Department, Dr. Sudhir Chandra, Institute of Technology and Sports Complex. This institute is previously known as Dr. Sudhir Chandra Siddiqui Engineering College. This institute is under GIS group. Now we will discuss here on electric arc furnace. As we will see how many types of electric arc furnaces are there and how and by using other methods the furnace can be utilized. These two we will discuss in this section. Let us start with electric arc furnace. Electric arc when well, voltage between two electrodes separated by an air gap is increased, a stage is achieved when voltage gradient in the air gap is such that the air in the gap becomes good conductor of electricity. Arc is said to exist when electric current passes through the air gap. It should be noted that very high voltage is required to establish an arc across an air gap, but to maintain an arc, small voltage may be sufficient. An alternate way of producing an arc is to short circuit two electrodes momentarily and on entering them back, we get an arc. With this method of striking an arc, we do not enough, we do not require high voltage. An arc is provided a large quality of power, quantity of power in small volume. This concentration of heat develops a high temperature of 2500 degrees centigrade from carbon arc. Forms a good heating source. This principle is made use of electric arc furnace. Others advantage of electric arc furnace for steel making over conventional methods are as follows. First one, it produces steel demanding high purity extracting analysis. This is because in arc furnace, wide variety of condition can be precisely controlled. Secondly, our furnace can operate on 100% steel scrap, which is cheaper than pig iron, whereas the cupola or converter taxes requires a proportion of pig iron in cupola charge. Thirdly, capital cost of electric arc furnace shop is approximately two thirds of the capital cost of an open Heart shop for the same output of bulk steel. So these are the main advantages and these are the main reasons why we choose electric arc funds. Now let us see direct arc funds. There are two types of arc funds which are there. Direct arc furnace and indirect arc furnace. In direct arc furnace, arc is established between the electrodes and charge and electric current flow through the body of the charge. Developing heat due to electric resistance of charge, developing heat due to electric resistance of charge through relatively small in amount, in addition to the heat radiated from the arc. 
There are mainly two types of direct arc furnace, namely those with non-conducting button, which is shown in the figure, and those with conducting button, that is shown in another figure. The former type has been much in use. Secondly, since the arc is in contact with charge, due to electromagnetic induction, there is still an action in charge. This gives so makes sense. Therefore, the melt we get is more uniform in composition. Now, let us discuss about indirect arc furnace. Here, arc exists between two electrodes and heat is radiated from the arc to charge. Maximum temperature attained by the charge is low as compared to attaining direct arc. As no current flows through the charge, there is no steering action. Therefore, it becomes necessary to rock this furnace. This indirect furnace are therefore made of cylindrical or spherical shell properly lined with refractory bricks, etc. from inside. Self is supported horizontally on roller. These rollers are connected by heavy reduction gears with Reversible motor control by series of time relay switches by means of which the furnace is rocked backward and forward. Angle progressively into increasing from 15 to 20 degree with the start of 160 degree as melting process. The objects of rocking the furnace is not only to bring the charge as quickly. As possible into contact with the healing lining and to uncover parts of the charge below. The surface which have not received heat radiation directly from the arc, but this incidentally ensure long life of refractory lining. To make the rocking possible, there are two electrodes, one from each side of the cylindrical or spherical cell. In other words, indirect arc furnaces are single phase type to avoid heavy unbalanced loads on three phase supply line. These indirect arc furnaces are made of low capacity series than one ton. However, special balancing circuits permit the load to be distributed equally over three phases. This furnace is also sometimes called rocking arc furnace. The charge in this furnace is Heated not only by radiation from the arc between electric clips, but it is also heated by conduction from the heat refractory during the locking action. It should be noted that since arc does not strike directly the charge, the risk of carbon pickup is virtually eliminated. So, this is the diagram of indirect arc furnace, and this is the packing belt. These are the charges which is supply. The supply is forming here. And in this is the two electrodes and arc is forming here. And this is the steel shell. Now advantages. Rocking arc furnaces have good following advantages. First of all, flexibility. Single furnace can handle large or small heat of widely different analysis. Interchangeable furnace cells can be reversed by different alloys, can be substituted in a matter of minutes. High, secondly, high melting speed. Large areas of heat heated refractory can come into contact with the charge by rocking action. This enables high melting rate to be attained without enlarging the refractory. A large output of metal from a rapid succession of heat promotes the maximum utilization of foundry, floor space, and labor. Thirdly, economy. Heart losses are small and power consumption is low. This is because melting is rapid and takes place in a completely closed chamber. 
high output rate with low labor cost so that total production cost per ton molten metal are highly competitive. Fourthly, no metal losses. Metal losses due to oxidation and volatilization are extremely low because furnace chamber is closed and carbon are generates a reducing atmosphere above the metal. Fifth, sound testing. The agitation caused by the locking action of the furnace and the absence of combustion gases ensure freedom from blow holes, inclusion and segregations. High pouring temperature may be revealing the atom. These two factors are responsible for sound testing in thin and intricate, intricate designs. So this is the main point why we are using arc furnaces. Now users of blocking up furnaces are ideally suited for making casting of LIRM for heat resisting abrasion of resisting and similar special purposes. It is also suitable for non ferrous castings of copper, bronze, gunmetal, nickel alloys, etc., particularly for hydraulic and other pressure feedings. Next, we will continue with induction heating. Induction heating is very, very important and it's mostly used for electric heating purpose. Let us see what happens in induction heating. When alternating current flows in a conductor, it provides reversing magnetic field. EMF will be induced in the secondary of the transformer. The only difference between the two processes is that in transformer, electrical energy transferred from primary by electromagnetic induction is utilized outside the secondary winding, whereas in induction heating, this energy is utilized in the secondary winding, that is, in heating the charge itself. We are quite familiar with eddy current loss in transformer flow. This loss is dissipated in form of heat in the transformer flows. In such a loss in the form of a heat is utilized in heating methods. It becomes useful. Consider a piece of metal forming the flow of the coil in figure 4.5. And when an alternating voltage is applied to the coil, the alternating flux is set up. And the rate of change of flux of eddy currents flow in the metal. The direction of flux is along the axis of the coil. The induced voltage in the core on account of rate of change of flux is in a plate at right angle to the direction of flux. The eddy currents due to induced voltage are also in this state. The metal core therefore provides closed path at the right angle to the flux. These closed paths are like to the short circuited secondaries having resistance and inductive reactors. The power loss of the eddy currents in the core products produces heat. So, this is the typical diagram for. Induction heating. Here AC supply is given and through the metal the supply current is flowing and EMF is induced and induction heating is taking place. The heat in the disc can be increased by firstly high coil current. Secondly, large number of coil charts. Thirdly, high frequency supply. Fourthly, close spacing between the coil and the wire. Fifthly, the disc may be magnetic material, higher permeability. Sixth, higher electrical resistivity of the disc, magnetic material. So these are the points by which we can increase the amount of induction heating. In the six points here, highlighted for increasing the heating power. Now we will concentrate on dielectric heating. Previously we have 
seen that in the afternoon gym, now I will briefly discuss about dielectric When a ferromagnetic material is subjected to alternative magnetic field, it gets heated up due to any currents induced in the material and the hysteresis loss in the material. The hysteresis loss is due to reversal of the magnetic field which brings about magnetic molecular friction and results in heating the material. Similarly, when an insulating material is subjected to an alternating electric field, the atoms get stressed and due to the inner atomic friction, heat is produced. This loss is known as dielectric loss. The diagram we have shown here for neutralizing neutral atom and polarized atom. Now we will see the advantages of dielectric heating. Here are six points we have shown as advantage of dielectric heating. First of all, since heat is generated within the dielectric medium itself, it results in uniform heating. Secondly, heating becomes faster with increasing frequency. For third, it is the only method for heating bad conductors of heat. Fourth, heating is fastest in this method of heating. Fifth, since no naked flame appears in this process, inflammable articles like plastic and wooden products etc. can be heated easily. Sixth, heating can be stopped immediately as and when desired. So these are the main points for using dielectric as our heating tool. Now we will see the uses where dielectric fittings are generally used. That thing we will see. Since cost of dielectric heating is very high, it is employed where other methods are possible or too slow. Some of the applications of dielectric fitting are as under. First of all, for gluing of multilayer plywood boards. Secondly, for baking of sand boards, which are used in the molding process. Third, for preheating of plastic compounds before sending them to the molding section. Fourthly, for drying of tobacco after glycerin has been mixed with it for making cigarettes. Okay. For baking of biscuits and cakes etc. in bakeries with the help of automatic machine. Sixth, for electronic swing of plastic garments like raincoats etc. with the help of cold roller threads with high frequency sound. We have also discussed six points where we are highlighting the uses of dielectric heating. So these are the main concerns that why we are using dielectric heating or using dielectric medium. Though it's very costly, but still it has a huge number of uses where the other mediums are not possible for heating purposes. So mainly for those reasons, dielectric fittings are taken. So this is my second lecture. I will not continue much more for today. We will finish this lecture here. In my next lecture, we will again discuss about electric fitting methods. And electric fitting heating method is very very important, and it is okay. Very efficient method nowadays. 
generally for cooking and kitchen purposes the heating media we are using like microwave or induction induction oven induction cooker those all things are used by electric heating so electric heating is a very very important topic and it's our newest technology are coming on based on this electric heating problem. So I have covered this lecture from the book of Shadhananda for Digitalization of Electric Power. You can go through any other books like David Gupta, Orange Spectro, or maybe anything else. But I have followed that book of Shadhananda for Electric Heating Power. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening my lecture.